Everybody that told me these clamps were garbage, you guys were 100% right. Everybody that told me these Benjamin 392 barrel mount clamps were garbage, you guys were 100% right. They were loose, they didn't hold the scope, and they broke. I went to sight in my Benjamin 392 and went perfect. This gun is extremely accurate. I mean like almost pellet on pellet type accuracy. I'm super pleased with it. Then all of a sudden it started messing with me. It started throwing shots. Like two shots high, two shots low, back up to high, back up to, and I was like, what is going on? Oh man, I got a, I got a bad gun. And then I thought, maybe I should check the barrel mounts. Yeah, they were loose. I'm not sure how well you guys can see, but if you look at my barrel, you can see some really deep indentations where I tighten these mounts up. And then you can see some slide marks where they loosen themselves up and slid around on the barrel. Just kind of scuffing the paint a little bit. I will go through and just dab it up with some touch up paint. Once I realized it was loosened, I tightened it back up. Then I was like, oh, okay, my problem's fixed. I took two shots, perfect accuracy. Pumped the gun up again, took a shot, and it was a little bit off, so I'm like, let me check this again. Checked it, it loosened back up in two shots. So I called it a day, brought the gun home, took the mount off, lock tighted everything in, tightened everything back up, secure. Took it back to the range. Oh man, this gun is shooting fantastic. Four shots later, it's loose in here again. Bully, it loose, still, and I lock tighted it, blue lock tight, right? So I'm like, well, let me tighten it back up. So if you look at the mounts right here, you can see a hole in one, but not in the other. That's where I snapped the bolt off in this because I was trying to tighten it up so much. Thank goodness I don't believe I damaged my barrel. Everybody that told me, hey, don't use these mounts, you guys were right, these are absolute garbage, and they are going in the garbage. So I went back and I read the comments on my first 392 video, and the consensus of everybody that was watching and leaving comments was, get the Baker air gun mount, and that's exactly what I did. With shipping and everything, it's just shy of 58 bucks, and you can get it from bakerairguns.com. This isn't a sponsored video. I went out and I bought this myself. Just if you're wondering where you get them, that's where you get them from. Wish this were a sponsored video. This is the mount right here. It has both Picatinny rail and a dovetail, but you only have two slots with the Picatinny rail. So if you buy this, you're gonna get some instructions with it. I'm gonna be honest with you, if you can see those instructions, they're not the best, clearest pictures. If you go online onto the page that has the mount right here, kind of scroll down to where it says a little description on it. Right above the description it says how to install. Just click on how to install. You get a lot clearer. You get these pictures here, but only you get them in color with a little bit more detail. These are a little easier to use, a little easier to read, a little easier to see. Your first step is you're gonna to wanna to remove this plate here. And to do that, you need to take these two screws out. That'll expose the bolt retention screw here. You take that out, you take the bolt out, you put it on, you put it all back together. Hopefully it should be that easy. But let's get these two screws out first. They're just a really small Phillips head screw. So I just went and I got more of like a jeweler's screwdriver because I am stripping this. So I was thoroughly able to strip both those screws in there. They must be Loctited in or something and they must be a soft metal because I just, there was no resistance before they ripped right out. So I got my Dremel tool out and I'm just gonna Dremel in a slot. Hopefully be able to use a flathead screwdriver to remove them. If not, whatever, I don't know.
Yeah. So I don't know why, but mine were kind of jammed in there. And I don't know how I was successfully able to do it. I, I honestly thought I was gonna scar this all up, but I was able to get it perfect, no damage to the plate, and I plan on just going to the hardware store, bringing these, and just getting two um, socket head replacements. They both come off now. Hopefully you won't have, you won't have the same issue that I had with mine. Oh, and they're just little tiny button little screws too. Hopefully the hardware store will have some. So I did, I went to Ace Hardware for seven cents a piece. I got just regular Phillips head bolts. For 28 cents a piece, I got socket head bolts made up. And the guy was actually cool. I learned a new trick there. I guess on higher end wire cutters, there's a place where you can thread bolts in and just shear them off and it helps preserve the threads. And that's what he did. He custom cut these down for me and he didn't charge me anymore. So that was awesome. And I learned a new trick. I did call Crossman. Crossman wanted a dollar fifty per bolt and $4 shipping, and I'm like, yeah, you know what? I think I'm gonna hold off and just try the ones I got made up. All right, let's get back to it. So hopefully, unlike me, your bolts come out perfect. If they do, the next step is to remove this plate, and I guess there's a little spacer back here that I did not know about, I was unaware of, and it's angled. Okay, I need to figure out what this piece is and how it goes in. So after you take your screws out, you're gonna wanna remove this plate here. And what I just found out is that there's a secondary plate underneath this one that comes out. And if you look, it's got a little lip right there. And that lip goes right in here behind the bolt. And that sits in like that. And then your plate also has a little ridge on it here. That ridge goes towards it. And you're going to have a longer side on one side. That side goes up as well. So when it's all said and done, it'll be like that. So we'll take these out right now. Keep them together, kind of just snap them in like that, set it aside. Now we're going to want to take this out. Now you're going to want to slide the bolt out. So take your bolt out. And I'd be careful where you set this down because you don't want any dirt or grime getting on it. Next thing you want to take is your new cover here. Short end, long end, short end goes in front. My one set screw is just the littlest bit poking through. So once I back that off a bit, it should slide on fully. What I'm gonna be doing now, let me flip the gun up and show you. Now that I have this on, you can see it slides around. I'm just gonna line it up with the end of the breech right there. Push it forward actually, I'll even take this. So it's lined up right there, nice and perfect. Put a little pressure down and tighten my set screws down. These set screws right here, that is the only physical mechanical point keeping this mount in position on the gun. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these things down very generously. All right, they're at a level that I would like to call balls tight. I doubt this thing's going anywhere ever. Take my bolt and reinsert it. Next thing we're going to do is get our bolt bolt back in, I guess you could say. And this wasn't super tight, so I'm just going to snug it up. That seems nice right there. Oh yeah, that's not, that's not going anywhere. So here's where the tricky part comes in. This little piece right here 
is your bolt cam. And this little piece right here is the cover plate. You want your bolt cam as close to your bolt bolt as you can get. For me, it's pretty easy. Just putting mine in snugs it right up. You want it as close so that when this is in battery, it can't wiggle backwards any. See like right here, with it not in, it can come in and out. This piece right here, when inserted, prevents that from coming in and out. And you can kind of just put it in and rotate your bolt and your bolt will kind of put, push it into the position it needs. So with that in position, put your cover plate on and put your set screws in. I'm going to use the new ones I got that are socket heads. I've checked these bolts with the factory bolt and they're spot on. So I have no concern with them going in and fitting proper. Tighten this top one in first. Now just to check it. Works perfect. So guys, I've got it all installed right here. It looks really good and it functions really well too. Cocks and everything, shoots. And when it's closed, I have that cam. Since I did that little thing, there's no play in the bolt when it's locked. So that's really good. I really didn't understand what the last step of the instructions were until I realized that that little piece underneath this plate right here that has the little lip down on it that goes in is referred to as the bolt cam and it just keeps it snugged up by keeping pressure on the actual physical bolt that you use to hold the gun bolt into the gun breech. I hope that makes sense. I hope watching this video, if you have any questions on it, it'll be clear. If you do have questions, you can ask me in the comment section. The other thing I just discovered about this gun is you can't decock it once it's back. You have to actually put it forward and pull the trigger. I'm super excited. Time to get my scope back on it. But you guys don't need to see me do that. And do that off camera, sight it in, go kill some pigeons with it. <laughs>